Hello. And, uh, and welcome. So, uh, yeah, where do you want to start? Um, okay, so you were mentioning uh, you were you know, I just found it like really, really coincidental that uh, he used actually, um, he used the same uh, title almost. And honestly, I don't know where he's going with that idea because I haven't had a chance to really listen to it yet. Yeah, yeah. So this idea of stagnation, I remember like listening to Ren. I think it's just the idea like you don't uh, like in order to not stagnate, you just got to constantly be like trying to, well, uh, push yourself like that's that's definitely the like uh one idea there but um but the problem that that mason was showing uh is is the innovation stagnation problem uh is like how there's uh you have punctuated uh times of technological development um and then uh you have points of stagnation and then you have like uh, more uh, um, innovation or or such, and that's um, he thinks that we're at the end of a one of the uh, upward movements and are starting to uh, taper as a society. And he uses oh, like okay. yeah. so essentially plateau. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, about the first about about your first point um and it's something that i might want to actually uh return to um, okay and we use uh, we use exercise as like an example okay but, okay yeah yeah I, I was actually gonna talk about piano playing and learning a piece with regard to the second thing but with regard to the first point uh like about how the need to actually go and push yourself uh do you think that has to do a lot uh, with the uh so-called meaning crisis that guys like Peterson are talking about? Yeah, I think in so much as you need to uh, work or do or do some sort of uh, like you have to be in a generally uh, upward, you have to be oriented upward in order to experience, uh, well, at least positive meaning, I guess. Um, but, but yeah, I think I think it's it's related in that you need to um, be uh, not stagnating. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I did kind of say meaning in air quotes for a specific reason because I don't like that term. Maybe it's just me being a stickler again, but. Um, you know, meaning suggests narrative. I personally like to, uh, you know, like say value uh, because, you know, like when you value something, uh, it, it, you know, like it is important to you, but it doesn't fall. The only thing that meaning has in terms of like a dictionary definition, which probably does not, is a prescribed narrative. And sometimes I don't think you necessarily need me, uh, need or not. Uh, and the danger for that, and the danger for that is, uh, you know, like you have you have all those fringe movements. Who who calls it a prescribed narrative? I do. Oh, I do. Okay. Okay. That uh, okay. That makes sense. Because, because just think about meaning. What meaning is? It's a literary term, right? What is the meaning of this, what is the meaning of the text, right? Okay. Do you think it origin? Did it originate as a? I don't know. I don't know. This is this is just how I segregate the two ideas within my own mind. But whereas the value is, wow, this is something valuable. This is something worth cherishing, and this is something worth fighting for, right? And if, if you look through if you look through history, how many times did humanity sacrifice itself and commit a lot? The atrocities in the name of a prescribed narrative, and, and you know, like that's what kind of like scares me within uh, within uh, the whole uh, like within the whole meaning community, uh, or maybe it's just maybe it's just because I am from Eastern Europe. Uh, I have relatives who had experienced communism and fascism on their own skin. So uh, maybe I take maybe like I take uh, the capitulation of uh, 
personal values and uh, the personal self a little bit more seriously than your average Canadian or American. Because like I am from that part of the world. So let's kind of buy this question. What's that? Uh, you know, like as like as I was saying, maybe that like the reason I post the, that question and differentiate the two is because I come from a part of the world which uh, had to deal with uh, fascism, with uh, communism, and uh, you know, with uh, pretty much a uh, totalitarian Catholicism. So. Um, yeah, what is your nationality or your uh, ethnicity? I was, I was born Polish. My father's side is uh, Belarus slash Ukrainian, German, and Polish. My mother, Polish, Hungarian, and potentially Jewish. There, there's actually a lot of big question marks because we just got scattered uh, all over the place. The only time I've ever seen my last name uh, appear was in Cyrillic. So, you know, like it's obviously like a Russian or Ukrainian name. name. Oh, of course, there's like the Poles who are really who spell exactly the way I do, but they're like my immediate relatives. Okay. Okay. And so, yeah. And, you know, like I'm looking at the situation in Central Europe and, you know, like what, and um, when I hear people talk about outsourcing sanity, outsourcing, outsourcing meaning, to, um, I actually get a little bit frightened. Where have you where have you heard that? I've never heard uh, like when you say outsourcing uh, meaning. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, there's actually again I'm actually I don't like to quote stuff. I actually have a very poor memory uh, when it comes to quotes, but uh, you know I do remember like what we got like you know like we met talk you know just talking about Pierce and stuff. I like I've watched lectures and stuff like that. He actually talks about uh, the social role is uh, you know keeping people sane. Which is, which is true, and which is, actually, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sidetrack. I was watching his interview with Mark Manson the other day, okay, and he also said something that actually bothered me. He likes to drop the one Nietzsche quote that the European mind developed through Catholicism. Okay, that. Uh, I would actually say that European that mind could have developed in spite of Catholicism. There is something that a Canadian or an American will never, ever, ever, ever understand as, you know, like, uh, regarding uh, European Christianity and Catholicism. America has separation of church and state. If okay. I, he, was he if, talking about the Western mind or just the the Europeans? I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember the exact detail. But okay. right. North America, Canada, and the United States have separated church and state. Furthermore, it's multi-denominational. If I feel that a certain Christian denomination is ethically uncouth for me i can still continue to believe in god and go to a different church i do not have option if that same option in um, a 99 percent catholic country where uh uh you know like where everything is uh, mandated from uh, the bishops, right? You know, like I can go like, you know, like different priests can uh, talk about different things and you know, like there's that variety, but I cannot escape that institution and find a, you know, like find a clerical home that is in accordance with my value. At least I couldn't as much in, Pol like in Poland. Well, I left Poland when I was four, but like, you know, like I still speak the language and stuff like that. But uh, even though I'm not a practicing Christian, but a lot of my friends in Canada and in the States are, uh, you guys don't know how much that liberates you ethically 
and I mean, how much freedom of conscience that actually gives the individual. Right. It's, it's, uh, it, it's, it, I, I think, you know, it I, tries think, to, I, I feel like it tries to, uh, it's, it tries to simplify without, uh, with as little loss of, uh, um, well, definitely it tries to, uh, simplify while it, uh, gives, I guess. Maybe, 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 but like my thought was I should turn off the knowledge as, uh, to market economics. Uh, the co like what we were talking about, comp like competition and stagnation, you can kind of tie it back to this. Uh, decentralized clergy forces the churches to compete with one another and therefore keeps it, keep themselves ethically in check. You know, like they're policing themselves without an actual, uh, without an actual policing body. If, uh, you know, like, uh, do you remember the Westboro Baptist Church? Which one? Westboro Baptist. I remember, yes. Yeah, yeah, the guys who actually, you know, like, God, God hates homosexuals, uh, blah, 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 America, another dead American because they're just gay loving nation, you know, like those guys, right? right. I, I, you know, like I have, it, you know, like if, if the church was given a government granted monopoly, that would actually mean for the whole country. I can at least assess that church on my own ethics and choose to attend another Baptist church. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so, you know, it's just, so, you know, it's just like in, in many ways, you guys don't understand what, what uh, kind of religious freedom you guys have. Or if you think about the Arabic world, the problem is not as long. The problem is uh, all those uh, sheiks or uh, whatever, you know, like all those politicians who actually secure a certain branch of Islam and uh, give it political power. Like I've had a lot of friends uh, from Iran, you know, like over the course of my lifetime. Yeah. None of them. Yeah, I don't. Them I never want to go back. That was good. What's that? Yeah, I had like a lot of friends who were from Iran, like over the course of my lifetime, be it through music, through work, et cetera, et cetera. We do have like a decent sized Persian community and uh, none of them would ever want to go back. Yeah. And, you know, like some, and some of them actually did attend the mosque. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually don't know uh... I, I don't know enough about foreign, uh, foreign, I mean, I know some things, but I don't, I don't know enough about foreign, uh, places or the, the, um, I guess modern or, or, uh, historical like problems, uh, going like going on, uh, over, over there. Yeah, yeah um, you're probably going to think a little bit on the news because, you know, like, it's you know, just some of the stuff like what people told me in conversation as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely been, been, uh, me and the, the, the news ever since I think, uh, after the, uh, the debates or, or the, the election, I've just, me and me and the news have been estranged basically i stopped watching the news uh during the election i value my sanity and there are more important things in life than biden or trump yeah. it was too it was i was interested because it's it's uh you know it's interesting but it, it um i just uh life wouldn't it was like uh life wouldn't allow me to keep up you know with every story and then neither would your sanity I'd yeah. Say, yeah you know i, I was I, actually i was thinking michael and i think you'd be a good person to like ask is like just mm -hmm. i've i've found that it's important to you know uh keep up with with the context in which you're you're living but like but like how much 
info is too much like like info i guess i guess okay let's talk economics money one of my favorite things <laughs> uh what is money I, I, okay, so the uh, the word I've I've heard it's it's an agreement. Exactly. It's a symbolic representation of trust. What is the best way to destroy a country? What's the best what to destroy? What's the what's the easiest way to destroy a country? Tear them apart. Right. Get people to uh, get people to, to breach their contract. Mm. Mm, yeah, but get people to breach like like the social. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Now the reason, a big reason why yeah, uh, America works, why Canada works, but places like Zimbabwe do not, is because uh, we think of ourselves as individuals, and I can trust Shane. Shane can trust me. I can trust my neighbor, and we and we are responsible to forge our own relationships. Tribalism does not allow for that. The reason, like a, a big reason, which I believe, which uh, like why the Zimbabwe dollar is worth absolutely nothing, is uh, because everybody is tribal. Nobody lives up uh, to contracts outside of the tribe. There's no trade. Nobody. So, so it's, it's, so you're like individuals aren't interacting. It's, it's collectives. Would you have, would that be like businesses or what? Or Right. Uh, not even, not even businesses. Because the next point that I wanted to make is there's a currency that is far more valuable than money. Time. And when Which you watch, the, old, the old cliche would say are equivalent, but I guess you disagree. Just, uh, just uh, time at time. Yeah, time. It, it, it does have it does have certain truth to that, but um, you know, like we can get, you know, we could get into uh, stuff like uh, you know, is doing something is spending. 20 years of doing something you absolutely hate worth uh, the million dollars a year. Right, right, right. 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 So, uh, but anyway, getting back to the news, if time is a more valuable currency than hard earned cash, why are people glued to the media? Right, right. You're, yeah, yeah. You're bringing up a, a really good uh, a, a point there. It's, and as far as and as far as what's your, um, I guess what's your what's your mental state after after your digestion of, you know, X. And I think you have to ask yourself that, right? The next. Yeah, and, and, and the answer and, and the honest answer to that is going to be fucking horrible. <laughs> Right. You know, right. Unless I, th I think you can, there is a way to have a dialogue about um, about uh, uh, politics that is that is fruitful. It's just not in the form of you know uh, bombarding yourself with with news. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the, here's here's the thing uh, that I, that I've also noticed is uh, we take in the personal and made it political. The personal and the political? No, we took the personal and we've made it political. Just so, just so some bunch of idiots can collect uh, tax money and put uh, and refurbish the government in their personal pockets. Like seriously, is it really that much of a political issue? Like who you like to sleep with, what color your skin? Like, <coughs> sorry, dry throat. Uh, are, are those really, you know, like, I understand there were conflicts in the past, historically, whatever. But is it absolutely necessary to politicize everything? Right. The answer, no. Exactly. The answer, right. you, you know, you know, like, I have non-white friends. 
And they're not tokens. They're friends. Right? Right. And I'm, I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. And in the, in the, I actually, I mean, I had a dream about a black guy, but maybe we'll, we'll go, go back to that. Yeah, you know, um, in my part of the world, like I said, there's more Persians. Uh, <coughs> I said, yeah, there's more Persians and Asians than there is black people. So, um, you know, like if, if, if you were to come to London, Ontario, um, well, recently there's more blacks, but um, you just don't see very many of them. You know, like my best, my best, my best friend is like half African American, half white, and um, I haven't spoken to him for some time. I hope he's doing quite well. He's just like to take some time off. Uh, but aside from that, uh, you have to go up to Toronto or uh, Montreal is more Middle Eastern again. Um, or Windsor or across uh, or across the bridge in Detroit. So, yeah. Okay, um, okay. so you're would, in, uh, yeah, you I lived would, in Ontario? You're in, you're in Ontario? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's it's a city of about 400,000 um, uh, 400,000 um, uh, just south of Toronto. It's about two hours by car. Okay. Um, but yeah, just demographics wise, uh, you know, like definitely white Europeans. Uh, some Middle Eastern, uh, Asian, and uh, India. Okay, okay. Like, and how, I'm, I'm curious, like, how, if, if you've had a feeling for how uh, cohesive it is over there, like, like person to person, I, I, and, uh, you know, like, is there, is there near what you, like, imagine the united states is going through with honestly um you know there are people who try to put it aside there but you know i'm sure it's i'm sure it's the same thing in the you know like i'm sure it's the same thing in the states hello you know like that you know like there there are going to be racist jerks on both sides of the fence on all sides of the fence and there are going to be cool people on all sides of the fence as well but uh when push comes to shove people just negotiate and associate amongst themselves you know like if, if i like somebody i like somebody if i don't i'm not going to make uh, uh i would just want to hang out with them me personally you know like this thing is not important, right? Like I'm a mixed ethnicity myself, so whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If if uh, uh if, if you don't like them, don't don't. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, on, and honestly, my personal my personal thing is uh, personality and uh, values. That's pretty much what it boils down to. Yeah. 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 So do you mean like traits? Like like personality traits? Like uh, one thing I have noticed. Like Hello? Go ahead. Oh uh, no, you were just kind of cut out for a second. Can you hear me? Am I coming in? Yeah, yeah, you're you're back in. Okay. What was it that you were asking? Uh, I was asking uh, whether the personality traits like was something that you looked in for for you know friends. Common interest and values, mainly. Okay, okay. Because I can like I do, I can see like oh yeah, if there's someone who's you know open, you would imagine, and you're you're uh, open. Of course, there's there's other variables, but it's like oh yeah, those people might get along and might might actually that might translate to um to common interest but i don't know how i don't i don't know how uh um reliable 
that'd be like, oh, your personality is this, so so you're interested in this type type deal. Look, I t- I've taken the big five. I've taken uh, the MBTI. I should not be a musician. I should be an engineer. Right, right, right. I always uh, or or something like uh, like you'd probably be a good like uh, like geologist just because you like like looking at, at uh like uh i remember when we had talked uh before just being like sense oriented i uh, yeah well i don't know how much that that holds like people people find out new new things well that could also be true though from this um you know i do have my reservation of I do have my reservation about psychology as a subject at times. Um, I do think that we kind of look, we kind of look to a scientific, you know, to a prescriptive scientific explanations to questions which we have to answer answer ourselves. Okay. Okay. So uh do you want to like elaborate like what you mean okay so you know you know like i did you know i did the mbti once i came up i came up like anything between estp entp but you know like the, the whole extroversion thing it's like, yeah, I like hanging around people. I'm interested in things outside of myself. That much is true. But at the same time, I prefer the company of good friends over uh, to a loud and noxious party, right? And, um, you know, like, it, you know, like, if I don't see eye to eye with another person, regardless, like, he could be like a decent human being in every possible way, right? But if I just don't find a person interesting, it's like, okay, cool uh nice meeting you and then just i wish you well in life and then just move on and do your thing right same thing and uh same thing the whole sensing intuitive divide i think is completely fruitless uh thinking and feeling that that's actually a, that's actually a really interesting one i find you know the demacia experiment uh i'm talking demacia uh no no i know who demacia is though I've, I've, yeah. okay. he, he wrote this book, he, he had this one clinical patient, uh, which was completely rational, but he had like the emotional circuitry of his brain completely destroyed, and he was incapable of making a decision. So he could reason about anything and everything. But uh, you get him to order a cup of coffee at a donut shop, he couldn't do it. Okay, okay. And why, so what was that? Uh, like, what was the, what was the uh, explanation? That, that you can't set that all, that, uh, that like the whole thinking and feeling divide. Um, I don't, I, I actually don't believe it exists. I think it's only feeling. And evaluation. Well, Okay, I think there, um, you could you could, you could be right. You could be right. I make I make I make a distinction. Uh, okay, here, here's here's my question to you. Shane. Here's my question to you. You know me as a hardcore rationalist, correct? Yeah, mostly with with a with a taste for music, right? But, you know, like when 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 push, when push comes to shove, uh, I I don't usually go to to uh, emotive arguments, do I? Right. No. Okay. No. Now, my question is: it is it because uh, I is it because I value reason, or is it because I'm reasonable? Okay. Okay. So. So, 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 you know, like, like, you know, like if you actually turn to phrase value reason, it right. is reframing it in an emotive, in an emotive frame. And also, if you, if you want to talk about reasonable, 
there is no such thing as uh, reasonable without a backbone of values. Right. Well, so I was I was going to say, like, if I was describing it, be do you value reason or are you reasonable? Um, yeah, I was just thinking reasonable because that's that's more that's that almost seems more like a uh, an explanation that involves, you know, your mode of being. Rather than than like the, just the, the cognition or or yeah yeah right anyway i was i was actually just trying to this i was actually just trying to uh take apart um uh you know like you know like take apart just thinking by itself like you know like pure computational thinking uh versus thinking as a human being right right okay because because like look look uh Getting back to the previous topic of atrocities, you and I would consider them unreasonable because we have a different set of values. Right, right, but but but, but that's but, not. I, here's, here's the catch. Here's the catch. Sorry to cut you off. Here's the catch. If you were to read the Mein Kampf, if you were to read the works of Vladimir Lenin. Or uh, Mao Zedong. The garbage that happened in every respective country is a logical consequence of their prescribed values. That's the horrible part about it. You can't. You can't. You can't. Un, uh, you can't. Un, uh... Sorry, you're cutting. Up. You were saying something. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You can't divorce logic from values. Well, right, in that, in that when you, so in that when you, uh, well, that there's logical conclusions to the values you're prescribing? Exactly, exactly. You, you start with a value, and like with a value, and, uh, you know, like they kind of play out in you know, like in consequence of the value, right? Um, and uh, you know, like even uh, like even Red, she's like known known to be like the queen logician bit, an emotive bitch. But you know, like I cracked open uh, her like her uh, book on virtue of selfishness, right? The first thing she says is uh, primacy of values. Um, you know, like the ultimate value is your own life and uh, situ as an individual and the life of others uh, as an individual. And you will not sacrifice yourself to others and others to yourself or sacrifices the, the, is denote, uh, it, it means an exchange of a higher value for a lesser value. Well, that's the... She so, does, so you know, she does she allow for, for dying for the other, though. You know, you know what? Uh, that, that's pretty much, uh, that, that's, here's the crux, okay? She has a very specific definition of sacrifice, an exchange of a higher value for a lower value. We're not, we're not talking in Petersonian terms, all right? We're, like, we're actually using, we're actually using a different intellectual framework for that. When you choose to do good to another person, show them generosity, even offer your life for somebody else, that is because you personally hold that thing of great value. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that that I do uh, like uh, resonate with. If if you know, you know, if you don't do something, well, man, that's that's. That's kind of a big one. Is don't don't do something that you couldn't, you know, live with yourself. After. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And I know we're jumping from topic to topic, and um, you know, another thing that Peterson actually talks about is a lot is resentment. Do you ever pick up on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brings it. He brings it up. 
Now do you think now do you think that uh, resentment is stemmed from from uh, the wrong kind of sacrifice? Yeah, well, yeah, being being so being silent when you should say something, or or um, you know, being uh, we're just being a doormat. What's that? We're just, we're just being a doormat for people. Right. Right. So, so you know, it's just yeah. uh, so that that would map onto you know the wrong you know sacrifice. That's exactly. Like, Man, and now I'm thinking of like, if there's any connection to the Cain and Abel story at all. Like, did did I think I think there is? I I think there is. Um, and, and you know, and you know, like she herself was an atheist, okay? Right. Uh, but um, if you read We the Living, I've never read a more passionate affirmation of the value of life in my entire life. Right, 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 right. I I remember her her thing was like. Uh, and I don't know what I th think of it at this point, but it was like, you know, uh, all the uh, religious uh, language, all the most powerful language. She was like, oh, it's, you know, it's no fair that these all got taken, you know, off of, you know, life as we know it and put it into this mysterious realm. Yeah. The, um, and this is actually another thing that I actually believe with her. Um, and it's something that I've wrote in response to some guy who actually addressed me at Christianity, regarding Christianity. Okay. Uh, and I told him why I actually refuse to go to church or temple or mosque or even be a Buddhist for that matter. It's, uh, I value the life here. And, um, you know, I'm not here to answer the God question for anybody. But I do know this. That if I personally, me, me, if I were to die tomorrow and meet God, I would want to meet him standing up. Not groveling, not weeping, not being apologetic, and then just simply say, thank you. This life thing was pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> and why standing up? Because I actually find that I, you know, like the idea of kneeling, sticking your head in the sand, or, uh, or uh, any form of asceticism as completely disrespectful to yourself, which is, uh, you know, like if you happen to be religious, by extension, disrespectful to your creator. Right, and I think I think like that that's sort of the idea of like worship, right? Is to like take time for for, you know, like just saying thank you daily, like like just just a small like you know. <laughs> affirmations that keep that sense of uh sort of like a numinosity or like a or like a wow like things are things are really like great yeah you see uh in her case uh, it was uh, like she herself believed in uh the clarity of concepts right and she she found like a lot of the language of religions to actually shroud reality and make it ambiguous also, which is why, you know, like, you know, like after reading her, I've actually became more, try to be even more precise in my speech. And okay, you this? Like, yeah, like even after reading like her work, you know, like, like her work, I've actually made an effort to be more precise in my speech. By the way, did you notice how like even on the forums, I actually, like if I were to actually make a point about saying something, I was prelude, prelude with a little bit of a definition. You know, like, I mean this word as this. This is the concept I wish to represent. Right. Uh, because right. Uh, words are ambiguous. Yeah. Who's the author you were talking about? Uh, still going on about Rand. Okay, okay, okay. Because you did, you did bring up her, uh, her talking about, uh, uh, you know, like her talking about the criticism of religion, right? Okay. Um, my whole thing is... I just don't want a foreign institution owning my mind and uh, my spirit or my convictions. So, you know, like, if God exists, it's just between me and him.
and you know yeah, and i think i think it is fair to to um be outside of it if that's where you if that's if that's where you fall almost like like if that's or if that's oh gosh how would i put it uh a genuine expression of your genuine um, beliefs, I guess. And that's, that's like the, uh, that's it like is. the only excuse, but I don't know. Yeah. It ahead. is. And, 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 you know, like it's, it's definitely not being like the Richard Stockton's type of atheist. Because, you know, you know like, uh, like I, don't, I don't want to put words in Richard's mouth. Um, but I've noticed that, like your skin club, often. I think being often, a Richard Dawkins type atheist plus gratitude, I'm like, good enough. <laughs> look, uh, I like. I have no beef with Dawkins. I usually don't watch his uh, his debates with religion simply because the top the subject matter does not interest me. I do, I do own and enjoy his work on biology, which I've read in the past. Uh, Selfish Gene is an interesting uh, book. It's definitely worth people's time. And uh, there is a sequel to like uh, the extended phenotype, which is again, worth your read. Like that's kind of like where he goes into uh, like the beginnings of epigenetics and whatnot and how and how the genes start to express themselves within an organism. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, here's a book where he actually takes evolutionary theory based on, like, to the beginning of life. And he talks about uh, the, the uh, experiments in the 1970s trying to um, create the first cell Frankenstein style from a bunch of free-flowing proteins. Okay, dude, if you want to, like, go into... Uh epigenetics i mean that that might like as far as like picking up uh some of the you know where we left off with with you know ryan um because that that was i remember that was uh something that i remember like i had known about epigenetics but learned more from him like i just if if you want to like tell me what you know about epigenetics i'm i'm like honestly maybe later maybe later Work, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 and it's you know, like it's it's long, and Ryan knows a hell of a lot more than I do. I just know, like, casually, just uh, oh, this is curious, okay, cool. I only have an hour to devote uh, myself into this because that piano is calling me, or I have a shift at work, so right, right. Uh, by the way, um. I am, since we are recording this, I am going to make this public. I I will be dropping some Brahms. Okay. On my, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now I'm commit. Now I'm actually committing myself to actually getting off uh, my butt and uh, recording something. Dude, dude, with the with the, um, I could I can delete this because it might be embarrassing. But you got the haircut. You got the like. Okay, okay. So, so look, about the haircut, about the haircut, uh, you know, I was just kind of getting gross and, uh, you know, like disproportionately, you know, just like male pattern baldness and stuff like that. And uh, we're still in COVID shutdown in Ontario. You're what? We're still on COVID shutdown. So what'd you, what'd you do, what'd you do to get the uh, haircut? I, Did you bribe? No, no, COVID shutdown, as in, uh, as in, as in like the stores are closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how'd you get that? How'd you get the haircut? You took my beard to turn it to my head. Uh, that's uh, right. Yeah, I'm just like, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In, in, uh, yeah, yeah. In true, in true Michael fashion. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I don't have the patience for this. I do it myself. <laughs> Hair and God. Yeah, and, and, and this is already like about uh, the second week through. Like, uh, there were, you know, like last time we talked, there, might have, there was a reason why I wore a, t- a beanie. Yeah. By the way, just, just so you know, uh, it is February and I still have 10 lines. And you still have three lines? 10 lines, like when I shaved my head. Oh. oh. <laughs> 
Wait, what so, are what are inlines? Tan lines, you know, oh, like from tan lines. Tan lines. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Dude, that's hilarious. Dude, I'm 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 like so glad we talked, dude. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we're jumping all over the place as usual, so I hope this conversation could actually be fruitful for your channel or not. Well, yeah, no, I th I think I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, um, you did want to talk about learning, right, for a little bit? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you if you uh, have time, for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, first order of business. Decide what you want to learn and commit to it. One more time. Uh, decide what you want to learn and commit to it. Uh, I know this is this should be a no brainer, but uh, don't half ass anything, right? So, so you know, like I'm totally bad for this as well. But sometimes, sometimes no. kind of yeah, if you want to learn something, learn it. Like, like exactly. Doing it, so. And you're thinking about the politics of the day in the back of your head. You don't need that garbage. Right. 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 So, so you know, it's it's not it's not so much that you want like you want to use meditation or anything like that. You know, uh, the whole no mind thing. No, you want a clear mind. You want a clear razor sharp mind when you do it. So do whatever it takes to get yourself in the framework, and then just decide on it. Yeah. And yeah. watching the next video about learning is not going to help. You just got to sit your ass down and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so why um, we can we can edit this out? Why why did you I uh, think we should edit edit this uh, edit this piece? Um, uh, honestly, because um, my thoughts are all over the place and I'm very focused. Right. Um. Okay. Okay. I think. Okay. So we can either keep going i think what we recorded before that we can we can definitely uh keep yeah. uh, and, and also yeah. and also like what i really wanted to see is uh there comes a time where you have to trust the knowledge trust the what there comes a time where you have to trust in your knowledge right you know you just go out there you know you just have to go out there and take a chance with what you know yeah yeah, that's that's almost a randism too, right? No, which or or uh... I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't know. Um, she's she's a really weird writer for me. Yeah, yeah, and, very and, logical. And and and, 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 very, and, and, and the reason for that is I refuse to call myself an objectivist. Yeah. Uh, for one and one main reason only. Reading her work for me personally was a lot of convert confirmation bias. It's stuff that has been boiling in my head before I even got. Look, Shane, I'm 42 years old. I read Ayn Rand for the first time when I was 37. Wow. So, so like a lot, you know, like. Uh, so you know, like I'm reading with this. It's like okay, okay. She's telling, you know, like she's telling me stuff that I've learned independently from my own personal experience. The only difference between uh, her and me is that she has the writing talent and can articulate it. And she has developed her talent because she wanted to be a, a writer, whereas I wanted to be a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder. So you know, so, you know like it's you know like it's obvious that someone who perfected her craft with words would be better with words than me who just writes haphazardly. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's a function of like, uh, just sorry, go back on personality, but like I wonder if that's a function of. of I don't know. I don't know. Different, different people having different uh, similar. Different thought patterns on this, or uh, you know what? Why not? Why not just uh, stop categorizing and accept the person as, and try to accept the person as they are, right? Right, right. right. That's a that's a possibility. I don't. I've I've. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, well, that's actually that's actually my favorite personality theory. It's just like, you know what? You have Big Five, you have an blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. My personal favorite is the platonic theory of humors because I like talking about phlegm, blood, uh, liver, or whatever bile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, which, uh, which one are you? Like, uh, <laughs> like one of those uh, online tests? You- I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It's I just I just find it funny, like uh, that you can actually kind of describe uh, personality in terms of gore. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe, or maybe I just watched too many horror movies in my life. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you know. Here, you like, here's another here's another episode of Michael Myers Halloween in the back of my head. Oh, some flab, some blood, some of this. Oh, pl- Plato. <laughs> Do, um, oh gosh! Now just rent, do you, do you have uh, a favorite uh, holiday? Is a question I I want to ask uh, Michael. Um, I like the meaning of Thanksgiving. Okay. This is a big reason why, even though I was born Polish, I would prefer to say that I'm either Canadian or American, because we did not have that before. The reasons for that is actually the values. It's like you give thanks for you know, like for your work and whatnot. It could be 100% secular, right? It's something that everybody can partake in, and I like the values bestowed by it. Those are those are some good reasons. Yeah. Um, community. Why not? I have nothing against Christmas or Easter. Other than that, I hate. I absolutely hate the traditional Polish cuisine that goes with Christmas and Easter. So it's just it's just gross. I, you know, it. you know, it, does it just suck? Or? Yeah, I look, look. Um, if it, look, if you like fish, you love Polish Christmas. I don't. Good enough. No. Okay. okay. Right. Like I'm. I'm just. It's in better standing. Uh, for me. I guess. Yeah, and, and also. And also, um, I. Yeah, yeah. Um, another tradition is mushroom soup. I just don't like mushrooms. I never did. You know, like I'm always like, Mom, can we just like have Hungarian goulash instead, or uh, even just make a turkey like the rest of the Canadians? Like seriously, must we have this? And, and you know, I think this Christmas, uh, I've kind of convinced her because uh, pretty much the whole, you know, like we had the COVID. It was just me, my parent, and my parents, right? Because uh, like my sister lives in a different city. And, you know, she did make the symbolic fish and stuff like that. And both dad and I went to the fridge and fixed ourselves something else. You know, like, we just, you know, like, we just ate it for the life. I'm like, mom, can we just please have turkey next year? You know, like, we've been living in this country for so, so long. Right, right, right. I just want to get into that. Um, I... A lot of people, uh, a lot of the more hardcore Christians uh, like to criticize the commercialization of Christmas. Um, I have mixed thoughts about it. Um, financial responsibility, first and foremost, you know, like don't max out your visa. Don't max out your visa and don't max out your visa. Okay, I, I actually have, so as a, so you moved to Canada, when did you move to Canada? 
Uh, I was eight at the time, eight or nine. Okay, so did you have to go through the the like the socialization process? Like you you like went through it, like learning. Mais pas mon premier langue le français, la seule pas en anglais, apprendre en anglais. Mais j'oublie parce que je ne parle pas. My first language is actually French, um, not Polish or English, because uh, I also live in France. Uh, I was one of the solidarity children. I actually don't have any Polish papers aside from a baptismal certificate. Uh, we essentially got we essentially got dragged out uh, by Amnesty International and lived and uh, lived in France for about five years because um, communism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So was it, so I, I, the actually. The regime was could, active when you when you were when you were younger over there. What's that? The regime was active when you were younger. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we just got out. Uh, well, just um, shortly before or shortly after Yaroslavsky declared martial law. Bad. Like I was still a toddler back then, so you know, like the only thing I remember as a kid from uh, uh, from Poland was my grandmother's apartment and. That street and uh, our apartment uh, in um, in like a suburb of Łódź, and that strange uh, building which I once asked, and my mom said she explained to me that it was older, and it and uh, it's like out of my window you could actually see a concentration camp. So yeah, uh, not you know like as far as Poland goes, uh, you know like. You know, like you could kind of like write it off as traumatic, but it was not. It was just reality, but it was a sad reality. Uh, I remember more of France. I mean, that might that might be a good a good thing. It was it was also chaotic and whatnot. I also remember. Um, uh, like getting back to the previous topic, like a lot of great people and a lot of racism. You know, like uh, we lived uh, for about three or four weeks in like a refuge, like a refugee hotel. Yeah. And I witnessed some horrible shit there, like some guy taking a tennis ball, filling it with match hits, and then just dropping it, sitting on a fire, just out of a window on some guy just because he was a fucking Asian. Like, like how sick is that? I wonder if that has anything to do, like, like being in a chaotic situation when you're younger, like how much that has to do with being able to, um, uh, like, live in, in a chaotic... I don't know. I don't know. But, but, here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, my sister, like, developed this crush, like, at the time. Like, she's 10 years older than me. Like, she was uh, 15 at the time. Uh, uh, at, a, at this Vietnamese guy, uh, Shaq Lee, right? And, I, and you know, like, I remember him. I remember the guy, like, you know, like, he was essentially like one of the warmest, most compassionate people. Like, he actually inspired to become a therapist. By the way, could you edit out my sister's name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, she, uh, he inspired my sister to be a therapist. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then, you know, like, and then like- sister's, That's your sister's uh, job? Yeah, 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 and uh, and it was just some rando Vietnamese guy she happened to have a crush on, uh, where we lived like in this uh, kind of like re refuge hotel, right? And you know, like going back, going back after her studies, her and I got talking about this. The kid intuitively treated like a lot, like how he nurtured the kids. It was specifically like how, how she was actually talked to taught to uh, work with trauma victims. It's like you have this Vietnamese teenager who knew, like was willing to you know, like was willing to help anybody regardless whether he was white, a fellow Asian or an African or an Arab. And he was actually helping these people, like these kids, trying to get them acclimatized and uh, learn some personal dignity. And he did this out of his own free will. And he somehow had the instinctual intelligence to do that. So, you know, you know, it's just like, so uh, you see, like, in such an environment, you actually see the both, like, both the best and the worst of humanity. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I was actually I'm a, a man search for meaning. I'm going uh, into that, but but I do like yeah resonate with that that uh, idea. But yeah, like you know, like on one side you have a guy making like homemade match bombs uh, just to perpetuate violence, and then here you have like this guy who pretty much uh, left. I don't know. Maybe he was Cambodian or Vietnamese. It's like I can't. I can't remember. It was like uh, the early eight, like to mid eighties, like around eighty three ish, between eighty two, eighty three. And then here you have like this guy, like definitely Asian. It's like you know, like showing like the greatest compassion there is. It's like it's like just wow. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the the you see the emotional, uh, uh, pendulum. Exactly. The, yeah, yeah. I think that you know, the, you know, in some ways it was chaotic, but it was, and uh, you know, like after that, uh, you know, we had we had the French nationalists, uh, you know, like knocking at our door, telling us to go home. Um, some of my childhood friends, uh, or like this brother, like these two brothers from Morocco, uh, this Lebanese girl, whole bunch of Czechs, and a uh, Spanish guy. Uh, so that was, that was like the, uh. So that, that, that was that was kind of, that was kind of like my childhood in France. It was like very very cosmopolitan. Uh, in some ways it was good, in some ways not. Like you know, um, uh, I actually did get a kick out of Mason's comment that there's more intellectual capital in uh, his university than in the entire country of France. A big reason. A big reason. Um, so you, a big got that, reason you got that comment. Yeah. Yeah. I. I I think um, I think I'm one to comment because part of the reason we left for Canada is because France was the epitome of welfare state, and there was no way in hell for anybody to get a decent job um, without the proper connections. So. <laughs> Okay, and what what were the so what were the proper connections? Just people in in higher like socio economic status, or no, not even that? Even getting permission from the government, right, right, right. Government like, the different licensing and stuff like that. Right. You know, like you know what? Uh, you know, like what I said earlier about religion, how uh, religion is desensitized in Canada and in the states. And uh, that you can choose your you know, like your branch of Christianity based on your values, right? And you know, like that's you know, like like seriously, um, appreciate you know, like be appreciative of what, what of what we have here on this continent. It's fucking amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, you know, it's just like. I don't have to, I don't have to ask the government's permission uh, to teach piano. France, it wouldn't be that you know, like you know, like it's not as controlled, but it does have a lot of business restrictions. So a lot of people do want to, like I don't see uh, like or it's been at the time I don't know what it is I don't know what it is right now. So like a lot of people who actually had some sort of uh, conscientiousness have left the country. As we did, my father was actually an electrical engineer. My mom, uh, she was, she did um, like she did like a lot of finance and engineering back in Poland. So, um, so you know, it's just like we did not want to live on welfare for the rest of our life. I'm like, and, and, and you know, and and then, and then government sanctioned housing. It's like enough of that. Like we just want something better, so we just came to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. And dig this, dig this shit. Did, like, um, did you know that in Russia, your only employer, like under the Soviet Union, your only employer was the state. Wow. 
you had no choice but employment. You got your career pretty much assigned, like assigned to you. Okay. Right. So, so it's just like, so, so you know, like, yeah, it's, you know, like, you know, like, it's a shame that people do invest in schooling and then there's no return on investment and blah 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 blah. It's like, yeah, I get the kind of the problem of the West. Yeah. But. Right, 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 right. Not having. Yeah, yeah. At least have a choice to do. You know, like. You know, so it's like, yeah, I have my retail job to subsidize my music, but if I wanted to double down on this, and make money doing this, I have every freedom to do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if it my, like my only my only one my only role, my only roadblock is. Uh, finding the people who would want to listen to my music and the students to teach and that's it yeah yeah and if like, it's, I, I think you you attract those when you when you you attract that when you when you continue growing and getting um better doing it more uh i don't know that 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 part comes you gotta set the intention and then and then just the yeah, follow through on that on yeah, it's not, yeah and, and honestly the only reason why uh why yeah i don't have it is just because i like i know i kind of slacked and i didn't like, put in as much effort uh, as i should have in the past. like I, I know i went through my, like my my uh whiny proto sjw i'm in you know like, entitled Mikhail's face and God, that was stupid. <laughs> but yeah, like, like seriously, yeah, I, definitely, I, think, I definitely have my phases where I was like, "Oh, that was, that wasn't uh, my brightest." But I mean, it's all, it's all part of it. You live, you smarten up, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but yeah, like the point is, I don't need to call Justin Trudeau. To, uh, to ask, it's like, yo, Justin, is it cool that I that my ne- that I'm gonna make my money teaching piano right now or trying to play? You had to do that to switch jobs in the Soviet Union. You actually had to go through a okay. commissar and get perm- and get government permission to switch jobs. Like in Canada or in the states or like anywhere like where there's like a semi free economy. Look, if I don't like the company I work for, what do I do? I print off resumes and apply. Or I start my own company. Yes, I will have to continue, you know, like, I will have to continue uh, working for that company if, uh, in t- you know, like, just to kind of get uh, some cash inflow. But the problem is solvable. So, you know, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just going back to the gratitude thing, man. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, wait, was I unmuted when I yelled at my, my fam? What did, what did you yell? Because I think you were muted. (laughs) I thought I was muted. I was like, I'm finishing. Yeah. 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 I was like, I'm finishing something right now, basically. Finishing it. Okay. 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 Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Do you need to go? yeah, I was just letting you know. But but go ahead. No, like do you need to go? Oh no. no. Okay, cool. yeah. Um yeah, so uh, Yeah, so what so you were uh talking about yeah, yeah, keep I mean that's that's all like really interesting like Yeah, so you know like you know like in some ways like you know it's like yeah it does does North America have its faults? Yes, it does. But holy crap, am I am I thankful to be here? Yes, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I was like, I don't know if I wasn't. Uh, I mean, I think there's, I think there's a healthy, there's a healthy amount of, you know, nationalistic feeling. To, to you know, 
Here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm pretty sure Rand talks about that. Go ahead. Who's that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, here's here's the thing. It's cool to love. It's cool to love your country. Uh, but you know, like because it is home. Um, I've only been in the in the United States a handful of times as a you know, like as a teenager and just like not not even traveling but just like cross border border shopping and stuff like that. Uh, once COVID thing, uh, the United States is definitely one of the few, like definitely on my I want to travel list. Uh, but there's actually uh, there's actually a lot that I love about American culture musically. I want to you know, like I want to go to a jazz club in New Orleans. I want to go to some hick town and listen to some master banjo player. Same, same, same. Yeah. Um, handful of my uh, favorite writers are American. Hemingway Steinbeck. Of course, I'm Germanizing his name because it's just habit. Because that's because we actually did pronounce that uh, with the German Steinbeck over in Poland. Yeah, uh, Steinbeck is actually from uh, the 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 Steinbeck Museum is like 15 minutes yeah, from here. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a California cat. Um, I also think, uh, you know, like, I, there's a Canadian writer, um, Alice Munro, she actually won the uh, Nobel Prize, right? And, and you know what? She is a great writer. Like, I don't want, you know, like, I don't want to, uh, you know, like, rip on her talent because it's, it's generally good stuff. Uh, but I mean, like when I saw the short list of like who was nominated, you know, it's like Cormac McCarthy was on there, Murakami, Atwood. I'm like, all, all of my favorite writers <laughs> were actually like uh, were actually uh, on that list. You know, like, um, Shoot, what's the one about the sheriff where he actually confronts all like the darkest evil? I'm blanking. Let me just check the title. Uh, no Country for Old Men. Wow. Brilliant. Like, that's a brilliant work. A great, yeah, great movie. And, uh, you know, like, I've had the, uh, you know, like, I always liked The Blue Road, but, you know, uh, and, but at the same time, I was actually told again, read it again when you have kids. Like I don't have children, but I had actually someone tell me to that, like who absolutely loved the book, you know, like as like when uh, he was younger, and then he read it again when he was a father, and it was just like <sighs> next, you know, like next level game. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, yeah, I actually do love a lot of American culture. Yeah, it's 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 definitely. Uh its own definitely its own thing in it in, in, <laughs> yeah 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 um okay so i probably do in like in probably like uh five ten minutes here i gotta yeah. uh, run but um but yeah dude it was i mean uh, well, i think uh yeah you know what? i hope this could be a value to somebody what's that I hope, you know, of, of the entire conversation, like the one that was actually most personal for me is like not the psychology and the stuff that we talked about. It's, um, when I started talking about uh, leaving Poland and leaving France, I honestly do hope that if somebody listens to our conversation, that they begin to understand how good we have it here. And then just curb the complaining. Yeah. You know, you know, like it's not about sight. You know, like, you know, like I, I, fuck, I love Dave Goggins, but you don't have to be Dave Goggins, right? You don't have to muscle, muscle through everything. It's just like, you know, like just take take a good look around you and just ask yourself, is yeah. this bullshit really worth it? Because it isn't. You know, it's not like it's, 
you know, like that, that's actually the one thing that I don't get, like when I like, and, and you know, like thankfully that's more on the internet than uh, in person, like, uh, you know, it's just like, like we see all, like we see all the French mobs on the internet, right? Yeah, it does go on, but I live in us like, I don't know how big your town is. Uh, at work, I don't think, you know, like, aside from one, like, one instance, I don't think I've never really witnessed a full-blown SGW freakout. And I've only met one uh, neo-Nazi skinhead uh, sitting a cop, sitting, uh, uh, sitting at a coffee shop with my friend, uh, you know, like the mixed race guys, the half black guy that I was telling you about, right? We were having coffee and he just had like a big spastika on, necklace on him and just was like totally tatted up and stuff like that. Um, my friend just walks up and was like, dude, you really have, you know, I don't know if I love you or hate you, but you've got some balls to do this. And then he just smiled and uh, we just went up to having our coffee and just like our conver conversation. And I'm, and I've always, like, he's also a bit of a musician and I'm always like trying to sweet talk him into like uh, playing the clarinet. <laughs> you know, just like after the whole COVID thing, it's just like, yo, yo, just get your horn out and we'll just jam on something. So. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, you know, but those are the only, you know, like, and both incidents ended up very, very peacefully. Like, they were, you know, like, you know, it's just like, it's like, yeah, it happens. But for the most part, I would say people, uh, you, you know, you know, the Pareto principle, like that people like always talk about, like, all the finance and all the like different girls and whatnot, the 80 20 rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's how here's how I look at it. You have Canada, you have the States, you have like even like even the war torn war torn places like Lebanon or Syria or Iraq or oligarchies like Russia or dictatorships in North Korea. If you were to strip the political regime out of the equation, do you not think that eighty percent of the people you met are going to be ethically decent? Like, I'm, I'm not saying you have to agree with them, but for the most part, do you, think, do you not think that they would have, like... So what was the, what was the, what was the circumstance? Like, if, 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 you were to, if you were to strip their respective pol political regime off their back, do you not think that 80% of the people you meet are going to be fall in the decent yeah. category? Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I think closer to, like, 75, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But look, you know, you know, like I'm just using the Pareto as an example, right? Right. Um, and, and and you know, like I'm not saying that you have to agree or just vibe with everybody. It's just like, you know what? I don't like that guy. But is he a bad person? No, he's not. Right. And then you need to leave it be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But 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 here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. When I said eighty percent east, okay. You have to understand that it's a bell curve distribution. That ten percent, only ten percent of them are going to be scum. The other ten percent are going to be like your hyper compassionate and genuine, guy. like uh, very, very altruistic, uh, giving people, right? Because we're talking, we're talking about means and averages, and uh, uh, you know, like eighty percent of decent and twenty scum. That's actually a false dichotomy. So that would actually, that would actually take it like down to like maybe five percent that you really have to look out for. A five percent being, uh, you know, like you know, like five percent potentiality of harming, or like yeah, you know, even like two or three percent being criminally, you know, like criminally insane, right? Like that. That those are small numbers. Oh, right, 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 right. Because right. it's on a, it's on a bell. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and then, and then here you have again the media, like. 
You know, like, you oh, yeah, I wish we'd be afraid of one another? Why? Do you think that's an equal distribution? The amount of the the amount of people who were um, horrible is is proportionate to the at least just in quantity of people who were like, you know, saintly. I don't know that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just I'm just kind of using it like as a rough guide, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like you know, like what I'm what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that your average Joe Polak, your average Joe Yank, your average Joe Canuck, and your average Joe Arab, Asian, whatever, black dude, white dude, Hispanic, gay, straight is going to be a decent human being. Yes. And, and and you know, like and what we see in the media are just the margins to try. And the whole fear of confronting, not, not even confronting, meeting another person is completely unnecessary. Like, why are we doing this to ourselves? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I don't know. I think people might get like, part of it might just get, they're wrapped up in the, in the times or in in just how maybe other people around them are but yeah 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 i don't know if that was uh i don't know i like i wasn't expecting an answer it was just right. it was just more of like one of like a rant <laughs> But you know, it's you know, like you know, like it is you know, like it is a question that we have to ask ourselves. It's like it's like I'm not immune to it. Like like I'll tell you straight up, it's like you know, like if I go if I go on Facebook for too long or like on YouTube and or like just watch the news, I'm like you know, like I you know, it's just like you know, it's just like if I'm, you know, like if I'm watching, like hypothetically, if I were in the states, if I'm watching Fox and like those bloody liberals, I'm like, oh, wait a sec. Yeah, I am a classical liberal. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a disservice to to yourself. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I it's just that I'm just like, you know, it's just like I find myself just like at swear, you know, swearing, like, like after watching, it's like these dumb. Wait, and then I'm like, wait a sec. I believe in freedom of conscience, freedom of, uh, you know, like privacy, of uh, property rights, of freedom of association, freedom of speech, and I forget the sixth one. I would there, there for that, and I value personal freedom. Wait, that makes me a liberal. Right, 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 right. The the category my uh, brain uh, went to was uh, was libertarian when I just it just you know. Um, here's, here's the thing, like in political theory, I, uh, the only thing that I have noticed uh, that's different between libertarianism and liberal and classical liberalism is uh, that a liberal would account for uh, what, you know, like, uh, is, is cool with, uh, you know, like having state funded health care or state funded uh, um, highways and whatnot, whereas a libertarian would be uh, everything on the free market. Uh, usually, you, I personally, I personally take the more classical liberal position. Uh, an interesting guy, uh, if like if you're interested, like in the economics, uh, would be Friedrich Hayek, uh, the Road to Serfdom. I've I've heard of, I've heard of. Uh, and he actually, uh, and he denotes the like liberal position really really well. Like a lot of people hate on. Him. And the thing is, he's not against government intervention. He's not, he's a, you know, like, like if you actually read the book carefully, he might even be proposing uh, basic income. Just so long as everything is founded on, uh, you know, like on a free market economy. Right, you know, you know, just like, yes, if you can afford it and it's like, if it's economic surplus, why not? Okay. 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 I think and, that and, you know, like a libertarian would be like, uh, you know, it's like, would probably it's like, 
and I'm no free lunch. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I personally take more of you know, so, you know, like I would actually take more of the liberal position just as long, you know, like, but with Hayek's warning, it must be done on a free market. So, you know, like none of the centralized planning garbage that goes on uh, in what we call our NTP party today, or in like some of the more, ra like more radical wing of the Democrats. Okay. So, by the way, uh, this like this is not to talk about minimum wage and stuff like that. Um, uh, this is just, you know like this is just programs that don't redistribute like that are add-ons to the economy and not supplements to the economy. Uh, there's actually there's okay. actually very very like he talks about like a lot of the nuances and whatnot. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I don't I don't know enough of the enough of the nuance. I definitely think about myself as like uh, more. I mean, there's there's times where, where I feel more uh, like the distinguishing marks between, you know, uh, political parties like, oh, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of like, it's, it's like. Uh, so, so let me guess, disenfranchise like most people. No, no one party really represents what you believe in. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I mean, I. Yeah, we get that here in Canada as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it's good. Okay, so I think uh, maybe okay. So any like uh, yeah, if you if you want to like uh, closing uh, remarks or any loose ends that that you wanted to like uh, tie as far as as far as like what you were uh, talking about or. or Uh, let me think for a sec. God. Because I mean, I mean, like. Yeah, just nuances with 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 like uh, political parties. Like that's that's always been. Uh, like yeah, actually, actually, yeah, uh, uh, about that. Um, an interesting person to read uh, for political strategy would be Bruce Point of the Mesquita. It's uh, Br you know, like Bruce, as in like the normal American name, Bueno, as in Spanish for good, I think it is. The Mesquita, it's, it, the th think of Mosquito with an A at the end. Like mis like mosquito. Okay. I think it's even spelled exactly the same way. What he does, what he's about is he takes uh, game theory and starts and starts with the supposition that bureaucracies exist for the purpose of propagating bureaucracies and politics exists for the propagating of, of politics. And. Uh, he uses game theory analysis on that, and he takes certain parts of the states, India, and even like really absurd, like what, like he even explains uh, the incentives of uh, the Indian Communist Party making a co forming a coalition with some uh, right wing conservatives. So, so he he just he just kind of. Uh, uh, he just kind of uses that game theory and talks about political expediency. Re really, really fast. The book is called The Dictator's Handbook, by the way. It, it's, it's a great piece of marketing, but, uh, and, it's, and it's actually brilliantly written, definitely worth your time. Um, and except what he's arguing is uh, he starts with the position of what makes a dictator. Sure. But he goes through analysis, uh, and he, and he essentially proves the Aristotelian position that, in order to avoid tyranny, you have to have some sort of division of power. And he actually proves that with uh, using game, you know, like using game theory. But uh, yeah, you know, he has he has another book called The Logic of Political Survival, which actually which actually has 
a lot of the John Nash uh, game theory equations, but the dictator's handbook is actually written in plain English. So, you know, your, your non-mathematician could actually understand that pretty well. It's, it's, it's actually quite a fascinating read. Dude, dude. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so I think, dude, if you want to, uh, I'll, I just feel like I need to reload my juices. Uh, if, if, uh, we can, uh, talk like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, uh, yeah. If you want to, uh, talk later, uh, uh, tonight, if you want to record it, dude, ever, if you ever have an idea for like, uh, I, I, I honestly I honestly like our off the cuff things because I think we play off of each other pretty well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, I'm no longer a podcast virgin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I freaking uh I got, I got Michael. Oh yeah. <laughs> right on dude, right on dude. All uh Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um but yeah, I will uh Thanks for uh, coming on, and I will. Yeah, we'll 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 talk talk later for sure. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, do you do you uh, if you want to plug your your uh, your your channel? Uh, my channel, sure. I don't have anything on it right now, but the plan is. Uh, Art in the Mass, the exercise ball. There's that little piece made by the Heisman Company in Toronto, which needs some tuning, and I plan to be doing some recording on it. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I don't have a channel name right now. My YouTube account is uh, my first and last name. I'll possibly post a comment on this when it goes up, you know, just like thanking you and whatnot. Uh, I do not want to spell it because uh, I'm only one letter short of Schwarzenegger. <laughs> 13 against 14. It's like, I hate you. I love you, but I hate you already. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, you, you know, it's like great biceps, great fitness, and a longer last name. I hate you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll. Um, okay. Well, one question: Have you? Uh, have you? So, I mean, you don't look like out of shape. You've kept up. You've kept up with with extra during the during the. Uh, Andy? I'm 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 always active by nature, right? Uh, I, I you know like sometimes like you know like I've gone into gyms and whatnot, and they ask me what uh, my sport is. And I just answered playing piano, right? Playing piano. Right. Playing piano. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, like, look, ser seriously, when you when you try to shred Franz list, you definitely burn some calories. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. By the way, by the way, uh, you know Tim Ferriss, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So from from uh. No, 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 no. Like this, this is this is actually an interesting, thing, like uh, off the cuff factoid. You know Tim Ferriss, like fellow shaved head. Uh, he does the four hour work week. That guy, right? Yeah. He was interviewing a chess master at one time, and um, they've measured the caloric output of a chess. It, it that you know, it's like they measured him burning up to six thousand calories in a game uh, of chess. Those guys are bur yeah burning. I know it's just like what kind of level of concentration do you need to burn through three days of food, or at least three days of recommended intake? Right, right. You were absolutely focused. Like, I know. Just look, like when I'm like this at the keyboard, I'm just like, you. Right? No, it's just like, you, you know, I go, I. I get off of like my just like yeah chill whatever. All right, you know this is between you and me. Half of the time I screw up, but like the level of concentration that requires is just like, you know, it's yeah. just like I'm I'm sure like like some of the most elite concert pianists. I'd imagine it's it's yeah, yeah. 
I'd imagine. Especially, oh, man. Like, especially, you know, like, you can kind of hide your way through it and, like, ride off of, you know, like, muscle memory. If you've okay. played a piece over and over, you can just kind of, like, write it out on automatic, like, on autopilot. But if you're like if you're playing something new or you want to do, or you want to do something daring on stage, you have to be on. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You got to be on and and yeah, attentive. And, and, and you know, like the the only other you know the only other occupations that I could see actually requiring that level of concentration are surgeons. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be like ready for, it's almost like you're ready for, I don't know how to uh, explain it exactly, but. No, like you're very awake and focused on yes. that time. Yes, yes. By the way, um, after my last, after my last recital, uh, we both, I ate three cheese bagels. <laughs> bagels that's good that's good we're talking about 1800 calories <laughs> yeah 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 okay i gotta go in like in like uh two uh yeah sure sure but yeah 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 i'll um i'll so when i'm done uh editing i'll i'll send it to you and you can like give me the give me the thumbs up yeah man um all right cool all right look man have a have a good one yeah, have a good night, Shane. All right. Later, Michael. Peace.